Question 1. What are the primary ways foodborne illnesses can be transmitted? A. Sunlight and air. B. Physical contact, contaminated food and water, and pests. C. Only through undercooked meat. D. High temperatures. Answer. B. Physical contact, contaminated food and water, and pests. Foodborne illnesses are primarily transmitted through these routes, making proper hygiene and food handling practices crucial. Question 2. How long should you wash your hands to ensure they are properly cleaned? A. 5 seconds. B. 10 seconds. C. 20 seconds. D. 30 seconds. Answer. C. 20 seconds. Washing hands for at least 20 seconds with soap and water is essential for removing germs and preventing foodborne illness. Question 3. What is the correct temperature range for the danger zone where bacteria rapidly multiply? A. 0 degree Fahrenheit to 32 degree Fahrenheit. Negative 18 degree Celsius to 0 degree Celsius. B. 32 degree Fahrenheit to 68 degree Fahrenheit. 0 degree Celsius to 20 degree Celsius. C. 41 degree Fahrenheit to 135 degree Fahrenheit. 5 degree Celsius to 57 degree Celsius. D. 140 degree Fahrenheit to 165 degree Fahrenheit. 60 degree Celsius to 74 degree Celsius. Answer. C. 41 degree Fahrenheit to 135 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degree Celsius to 57 degree Celsius. This temperature range is known as the danger zone because bacteria grow most rapidly within these temperatures. Question 4. Describe the steps for receiving and inspecting food deliveries. A. Accept all deliveries without inspection. B. Check only the expiration dates. C. Inspect for damage, check temperatures, verify product quality, and ensure correct items and quantities. D. Unload deliveries directly into storage areas without checking. Answer. C. Inspect for damage, check temperatures, verify product quality, and ensure correct items and quantities. Proper inspection upon receipt is critical to food safety. Question 5. Identify symptoms that require a food handler to stay away from work. A. Mild fatigue. B. Vomiting. Diarrhea. Fever. Sore throat with fever and jaundice. C. Hunger. D. A headache. Answer. B. Vomiting. Diarrhea. Fever. Sore throat with fever and jaundice. These symptoms could indicate a contagious illness that can be transmitted through food, Question 6. How can cross-contamination in the kitchen be prevented? A. Use the same cutting board for all foods. B. Store raw and cooked foods together. C. Clean and sanitize all surfaces and equipment between tasks. D. Wash hands once at the start of the shift. Answer. C. Clean and sanitize all surfaces and equipment between tasks. This prevents harmful pathogens from spreading from one food item to another. Question 7. List the types of foods that are considered time-slash-temperature control for safety. TCS. Foods. A. Bread, cereals, and oils. B. Dairy products. Meat, poultry, fish, and eggs. C. Salt, sugar, and spices. D. Canned foods. Answer. B dairy products, meat, poultry, fish, and eggs. TCS foods are susceptible to bacterial growth and require time and temperature control. Question 8. What are the best practices for cooling hot foods quickly and safely? A. Leave at room temperature until cool. B. Place directly into the freezer. C. Use an ice water bath or blast chiller. D. Cool in large, deep containers. Answer. C. Use an ice water bath or blast chiller. Rapid cooling methods help prevent bacterial growth by moving food through the danger zone quickly. Question 9. At what minimum internal temperature should poultry be cooked? A. 
145 degree Fahrenheit, 63 degree Celsius, V, 155 degree Fahrenheit, 68 degree Celsius, C, 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius, D, 175 degree Fahrenheit, 80 degree Celsius. Answer, C, 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius. Poultry must be cooked to this temperature to ensure harmful bacteria are destroyed. Question 10. How should ready-to-eat foods be handled to prevent contamination? A. With bare hands for better control. B. Without gloves to feel the food texture. C. With clean hands or utensils, avoiding bare hand contact. D. Gloves are optional if hands are washed. Answer. C. With clean hands or utensils, avoiding bare hand contact. This practice minimizes the risk of transmitting pathogens to the food. Question 11. What is the purpose of a food safety management system? A. To increase restaurant profits. B. To monitor employee performance. C. To identify, reduce, and prevent food safety hazards. D. To simplify menu planning. Answer. C. To identify, reduce, and prevent food safety hazards. A food safety management system is designed to ensure food served is safe to eat. Question 12. Name the major food allergens recognized by regulatory authorities. A. Water, salt, pepper, sugar. B. Milk, eggs, peanuts, tree nuts, fish, shellfish, soy, wheat. C. Beef, pork, chicken, tofu. D. Rice, beans, fruits, vegetables. Answer. B. Milk, eggs, peanuts, tree nuts, fish, shellfish, soy, wheat. These allergens are recognized for their potential to cause serious allergic reactions. Question 13. How often should food contact surfaces be cleaned and sanitized? A. After each use. B. Once a day. C. Only when visibly dirty. D. Weekly. Answer. A. After each use. Regular cleaning and sanitizing of food contact surfaces prevent cross-contamination. Question 14. Describe the proper procedure for manual dishwashing in a three-compartment sink. A. Rinse, wash, air dry. B. Wash, rinse, sanitize. C. Soak, dry, polish. D. Wash, air dry, store. Answer. B. Wash, rinse, sanitize. This sequence ensures dishes are clean and free from harmful microorganisms. Question 15. Explain the FIFO method and its importance in a kitchen. A. First in, first out. It ensures the use of older stock before newer stock to minimize waste. B. Fast in, fast out. It prioritizes cooking speed. C. First in, first out. It's a method to organize kitchen equipment. D. FIFO is a financial accounting method, not applicable in kitchens. Answer. A. First in, first out. It ensures the use of older stock before newer stock to minimize waste. Proper stock rotation is key to food safety and quality. Question 16. What are the correct procedures for storing chemicals in a food service operation? A. In the same area as food, for convenience. B. Above food prep areas, to save space. C. Away from food, properly labeled, and in a secure location. D. On the lowest shelves for easy access. Answer. C. Away from food, properly labeled, and in a secure location. This prevents the risk of chemical contamination. Question 17. How should a foodborne illness complaint be investigated and resolved? A. Dismiss it unless more complaints arise. B. Blame the supplier immediately without investigation. C. Document the complaint, investigate promptly, and take corrective actions. D. Offer the customer a refund and forget the incident. Answer. C. 
Document the complaint, investigate promptly, and take corrective actions. Addressing complaints thoroughly can prevent future incidents and maintain trust. Question 18. What is the significance of AKCCP, and what does it stand for? A. Hazardous Actions Critical Control Point, a system for managing risks. B. Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Points, a preventive approach to food safety. C. High Quality Assurance and Control Points, a quality monitoring system. D. Handling and Cooking Control Procedures, a cooking guideline. Answer. B. Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Points, a preventive approach to food safety. HACCP identifies significant biological, chemical, and physical hazards at specific points within a product's flow through an operation. Question 19. Describe the process for effectively thawing frozen food. A. On the countertop overnight. B. Under warm running water. C in the refrigerator, under cold running water, or in the microwave if it will be cooked immediately. D. Directly in the oven. Answer. C. In the refrigerator, under cold running water, or in the microwave if it will be cooked immediately. These methods minimize the risk of bacterial growth. Question 20. What actions should be taken if food is recalled? A. Continue using the food until finished to avoid waste. B. Remove the food from inventory, label it to prevent use, and follow the manufacturer's instructions for disposal or return. C. Sell the food at a discount. D. Donate the recalled food to minimize losses. Answer. B. Remove the food from inventory, label it to prevent use, and follow the manufacturer's instructions for disposal or return. Prompt action is necessary to ensure food safety. Question 21. How should a cut or wound on a food handler's hand be covered? A. With a waterproof bandage only. B. With a bandage and then a single-use glove. C. With a cloth napkin. D. No cover is needed if the cut is small. Answer. B. With a bandage and then a single-use glove. This practice ensures the wound is properly protected to prevent contamination of food. Question 22. Explain the importance of food handlers reporting their health status to their managers. A. It helps managers plan work schedules more efficiently. B. Reporting is important for payroll purposes. C. It is crucial for preventing the spread of illness through food. D. It is only a formality and has no real impact on food safety. Answer. C. It is crucial for preventing the spread of illness through food. Food handlers must report symptoms of illness to protect customers from foodborne diseases. Question 23. What are the guidelines for cooking foods to their safe internal temperatures? A. Guessing based on the color of the food. B. Following specific temperature guidelines for different types of food. C. Cooking all foods to the same temperature. D. Using a timer to ensure food is cooked long enough. Answer. B. Following specific temperature guidelines for different types of food. This ensures that harmful pathogens are killed during cooking. Question 24. How can food safety audits improve a food service operation? A. By identifying areas of compliance and areas needing improvement. B. Audits are generally disruptive and offer little benefit. C. They only benefit large operations. D. They replace the need for regular staff training. Answer. A. By identifying areas of compliance and areas needing improvement, regular audits help ensure ongoing adherence to food safety standards. Question 25. What are the key steps in developing a food safety plan? A. Choosing a catchy name for the plan. B. Identifying hazards, determining critical control points, and establishing monitoring procedures. C. Focusing solely on pest control measures. D. Implementing new cooking techniques. Answer. B. Identifying hazards, determining critical control points, and establishing monitoring procedures. 
These steps are essential for creating an effective food safety plan. Question 26. Describe how to properly use a food thermometer. A. Inserting the tip into the thickest part of the food, avoiding bone and fat. B. Only using it for meats, not for poultry or seafood. C. Guessing the temperature after a brief insertion. D. Using it only at the end of cooking time. Answer. A. Inserting the tip into the thickest part of the food, avoiding bone and fat. This method ensures an accurate reading of the food's internal temperature. Question 27. How should perishable food be stored to minimize the risk of foodborne illness? A. At room temperature to ripen. B. In the refrigerator or freezer to slow down the growth of bacteria. C. In direct sunlight for natural disinfection. D. Near the kitchen stove for convenience. Answer. B. In the refrigerator or freezer to slow down the growth of bacteria. Proper storage temperatures are crucial for keeping food safe. Question 28. What measures should be taken to ensure the safety of water used in food preparation? A. Using only bottled water for cooking. B. Boiling all water before use. C. Ensuring water comes from a safe source and is periodically tested. D. Flavoring water to mask any potential contaminants. Answer. C. Ensuring water comes from a safe source and is periodically tested. Safe water is fundamental to food safety and preparation. Question 29. How does personal hygiene affect food safety? A. It has no impact as long as the food is cooked properly. B. Poor personal hygiene can lead to food contamination and foodborne illnesses. C. Personal hygiene is only important for staff interacting with customers. D. It is only about appearance, not safety. Answer. B. Poor personal hygiene can lead to food contamination and foodborne illnesses. Maintaining good personal hygiene is essential for all food handlers. Question 30. What procedures should be followed to ensure the safe preparation of food for vulnerable populations? A. Using more spices and seasonings. B. Adhering to stricter food safety standards, including thorough cooking and avoiding high-risk foods. C. Preparing food separately but without additional safety measures. D. Serving only raw or minimally processed foods. Answer. B. Adhering to stricter food safety standards, including thorough cooking and avoiding high-risk foods. Vulnerable populations require special attention to food safety to prevent illness. Question 31. Explain the role and responsibilities of a food safety manager in a food service operation. A. Primarily to supervise cooking processes. B. To oversee and enforce food safety practices, ensuring compliance with regulations. C. To decorate the dining area to appeal to health inspectors. D. The role is symbolic and has no real responsibilities. Answer. B. To oversee and enforce food safety practices, ensuring compliance with regulations. A food safety manager plays a critical role in maintaining a safe eating environment. Question 32. How can pest infestations be prevented in food service areas? A. By keeping doors and windows open for ventilation. B. Regular cleaning, storing food properly, and sealing entry points. C. Using only organic pest control methods, regardless of their effectiveness. D. Ignoring minor pests, as they do not pose a significant risk. Answer. B. Regular cleaning, storing food properly, and sealing entry points. These measures are effective in preventing pests, which are a major food safety concern. Question 33. What are the critical limits in a 8 ACCP plan? A. The points at which a hazard can be prevented, eliminated, or reduced to safe levels. B. The highest temperature food can reach before it spoils. C. The amount of time a chef has to prepare a meal. D. Financial budgets for kitchen operations. Answer. A. The points at which a hazard can be prevented, eliminated, 
or reduced to safe levels. Critical limits are essential components of a Hague CCP plan to ensure food safety. Question 34. How should food handlers address food allergies in customers? A. By guessing which foods might cause allergic reactions. B. Ignoring them, as most allergies are not severe. C. Providing accurate information about allergens in foods and avoiding cross-contact. D. Only offering gluten-free options. Answer. C. Providing accurate information about allergens in foods and avoiding cross-contact. Awareness and careful preparation can prevent allergic reactions. Question 35. What are the consequences of failing to comply with food safety regulations? A. Increased popularity due to media attention. B. Possible fines, business closure, and legal action. C. There are no significant consequences. D. A warning letter without further penalties. Answer. B. Possible fines, business closure, and legal action. Non-compliance with food safety regulations can have serious legal and financial repercussions. Question 36. Describe the appropriate steps for cleaning and sanitizing kitchen equipment and surfaces. A. Wiping with a damp cloth once a day. B. Cleaning with soap and water, then applying an appropriate sanitizer. C. Using bleach on all surfaces for the best results. D. Sanitizing only when visible dirt is present. Answer. B. Cleaning with soap and water, then applying an appropriate sanitizer. This two-step process is crucial for removing contaminants and killing bacteria. Question 37. How should a food service operation respond to a confirmed case of foodborne illness traced back to their establishment? A. Denying any responsibility to protect the business's reputation. B. Investigating the source, cooperating with health departments, and implementing corrective actions. C. Offering the affected customer free meals. D. Waiting for more cases to emerge before taking action. Answer. B. Investigating the source, cooperating with health departments, and implementing corrective actions. Prompt and responsible management is key to resolving the issue and preventing future occurrences. Question 38. What is the proper way to store raw meat, poultry, and seafood in a refrigerator? A. On the top shelf to avoid dripping onto other foods. B. Together with cooked and ready-to-eat foods for space efficiency. C. In air containers on the bottom shelf to prevent cross-contamination. D outside the refrigerator to save space inside for other foods. Answer. C. In aerodic containers on the bottom shelf to prevent cross-contamination. This prevents juices from raw meats from contaminating other foods. Question 39. How does temperature control play a crucial role in food safety? A. It ensures foods are cooked to a desirable taste. B. Maintaining foods out of the danger zone prevents bacterial growth. C. Temperature control is only important for frozen foods. D. It affects the food's color and texture, not its safety. Answer. B. Maintaining foods out of the danger zone prevents bacterial growth. Proper temperature control is vital for preventing foodborne illnesses. Question 40. What are the best practices for using gloves in food preparation? A. Reusing gloves for different tasks to save on costs. B. Wearing gloves in place of washing hands. C. Changing gloves between tasks and when contaminated. D. Gloves are optional if hands are washed less frequently. Answer. C. Changing gloves between tasks and when contaminated. Proper glove use prevents cross-contamination and maintains hygiene standards. Question 41. Describe the process for safely reheating leftovers for hot holding. A. Reheat to at least 135 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degree Celsius, for 15 seconds. B. Reheat to at least 145 degree Fahrenheit, 63 degree Celsius, for 15 seconds. C. 
reheat to at least 155 degree Fahrenheit, 68 degrees Celsius, for 15 seconds. D. Reheat to at least 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degrees Celsius, for 15 seconds. Answer. D. Reheat to at least 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degrees Celsius, for 15 seconds. This ensures that any potential pathogens are killed, making the food safe to eat. Question 42. How should live shellfish be received to ensure they are safe for consumption? A. In a sealed container to prevent oxygen from entering. B. At room temperature to maintain their natural habitat conditions. C. On ice or at a temperature of 41 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degree Celsius, or below. D. Without inspection, as shellfish are naturally resistant to bacteria. Answer. C. On ice or at a temperature of 41 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degree Celsius, or below. Keeping shellfish cold prevents bacterial growth, ensuring their safety for consumption. Question 43. What is the importance of maintaining proper documentation in food safety management? A. It's primarily for legal protection in case of foodborne illness claims. B. To track inventory levels and reduce waste. C. Documentation helps in verifying compliance with food safety standards and provides a record of due diligence. D. It is a bureaucratic requirement with no practical use. Answer. C. Documentation helps in verifying compliance with food safety standards and provides a record of due diligence. It's essential for both compliance and quality control. Question 44. How should a food handler dress to minimize food contamination risks? A. In casual attire for comfort. B. With minimal jewelry and hair restrained or covered. C. In any manner as long as they wear gloves with loose clothing and dangling jewelry to allow freedom of movement. Answer. B. With minimal jewelry and hair restrained or covered. This reduces the risk of physical contamination of food. Question 45. Explain the differences between cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting. A. Cleaning removes visible dirt. Sanitizing reduces bacteria to safe levels. Disinfecting kills all present organisms. B. They are different terms for the same process. C. Sanitizing and disinfecting are necessary daily. Cleaning is weekly. D. Cleaning with soap. Sanitizing with water. Disinfecting with air. Answer. A. Cleaning removes visible dirt. Sanitizing reduces bacteria to safe levels. Disinfecting kills all present organisms. Each step is crucial for maintaining a hygienic food preparation environment. Question 46. What are the guidelines for effective hand washing stations in a food service operation? A. Must include hot and cold running water, soap, a way to dry hands, and a garbage can. B. Only cold water and soap are required. C. Hand washing stations are optional if hand sanitizer is used. D. A single hand washing station is enough for any size establishment. Answer. Hay must include hot and cold running water, soap, a way to dry hands, and a garbage can. Proper facilities encourage regular hand washing, a critical defense against foodborne illness. Question 47. How can the spread of norovirus be prevented in food service settings? A. By cooking food at high temperatures only. B. Through thorough hand washing, proper cleaning of contaminated surfaces, and excluding sick employees from work. C. Norovirus is not a concern in food service. D. Using only bottled water for cooking and drinking. Answer. B. Through thorough hand washing, proper cleaning of contaminated surfaces, and excluding sick employees from work. These measures are effective in preventing the spread of norovirus. Question 48. Describe the procedures for handling ice safely in food service. A. Treat ice as food by using scoops, keeping the ice machine clean, and not allowing hand contact with ice. B. 
ice can be handled without precautions as it does not support bacterial growth. C. Using hands to scoop ice is acceptable if they are washed. D. Refreezing melted ice to reduce waste. Answer. A. Treat ice as food by using scoops, keeping the ice machine clean, and not allowing hand contact with ice. Ice must be handled with care to prevent contamination. Question 49. What are the guidelines for serving food safely in outdoor or off-site events? A. Follow the same food safety principles as in a restaurant, including keeping foods at safe temperatures and protecting them from contamination. B. Outdoor events allow for more relaxed food safety standards. C. Only disposable utensils and plates need to be used. D. Food can be left out longer since outdoor temperatures are usually cooler. Answer. A. Follow the same food safety principles as in a restaurant, including keeping foods at safe temperatures and protecting them from contamination. Consistent food safety practices are critical regardless of the venue. Question 50. How should allergen cross-contact be prevented in the kitchen? A. By labeling foods that contain common allergens. B. Using separate equipment and utensils for allergen-free and allergen-contained foods. C. Ignoring it as serious allergic reactions are rare. D. Cooking food at higher temperatures to destroy allergens. Answer. B. Using separate equipment and utensils for allergen-free and allergen-contained foods. This prevents the unintentional transfer of allergens to other foods. Question 51. What is the best practice for disposing of grease and oil in a commercial kitchen? A. Pouring it down the sink with hot water. B. Storing it in a designated grease disposal container for proper removal. C. Tossing it in the trash with other food waste. D. Burning it off in the oven. Answer. B. Storing it in a designated grease disposal container for proper removal. Proper disposal prevents plumbing issues and environmental harm. Question 52. How should a choking incident in a dining area be handled? A. Wait to see if the person can resolve the issue themselves. B. Immediately perform back blows and abdominal thrusts if trained. C. Offer the person water to help clear the obstruction. D. Ask them to leave the dining area to avoid disturbing other guests. Answer. B. Immediately perform back blows and abdominal thrusts if trained. Quick and appropriate action can save a choking person's life. Question 53. Describe the steps for conducting a hazard analysis in a food service operation. A. Identifying potential hazards, assessing the severity and likelihood of those hazards, and determining control measures. B. Focusing only on the most common foodborne pathogens. C. Conducting a hazard analysis annually. D. Outsourcing the process to avoid internal bias. Answer. A. Identifying potential hazards, assessing the severity and likelihood of those hazards, and determining control measures. A comprehensive hazard analysis is foundational to effective food safety management. Question 54. How can a food service operation ensure the freshness and safety of ingredients used in preparation? A. By using only canned or frozen ingredients. B. Establishing a first-in, first-out, FIFO, stock rotation system, and regularly inspecting ingredient quality. C. Relying on supplier guarantees without internal checks. D. Ignoring expiration dates to reduce waste. Answer. B. Establishing a first-in, first-out, FIFO, stock rotation system, and regularly inspecting ingredient quality. These practices help maintain ingredient freshness and safety. Question 55. What are the temperature requirements for hot holding and cold holding of TCS foods? A. Hot holding at or above 135 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degree Celsius, and cold holding at or below 41 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius, B. 
hot holding at or above 125 degree Fahrenheit, 52 degree Celsius, and cold holding at or below 45 degree Fahrenheit, 7 degree Celsius. C. Hot holding at or above 140 degree Fahrenheit, 60 degree Celsius, and cold holding at any temperature below room temperature. D. There are no specific temperature requirements for holding TCS foods. Answer. A. Hot holding at or above 135 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degree Celsius, and cold holding at or below 41 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degree Celsius. Correct temperature control is vital to prevent bacterial growth in TCS foods. Question 56. Explain the process for verifying the accuracy of food thermometers. A. Testing them in boiling water and adjusting to read 212 degree Fahrenheit, 100 degree Celsius, or in ice water to read 32 degree Fahrenheit, 0 degree Celsius. B. Assuming they remain accurate if they have not been dropped. C. Sending them back to the manufacturer for calibration. D. Using an oven's preset temperatures for verification. Answer. A. Testing them in boiling water and adjusting to read 212 degree Fahrenheit, 100 degree Celsius, or in ice water to read 32 degree Fahrenheit, 0 degree Celsius. Regular calibration ensures accurate temperature readings. Question 57. How should utensils and food contact surfaces be sanitized? A. With soap and hot water only. B. By rinsing with vinegar for a natural solution. C. Using a sanitizer at the correct concentration, following manufacturer's instructions. D. Sanitizing is only necessary once a week. Answer. C. Using a sanitizer at the correct concentration, following manufacturer's instructions. Proper sanitization kills germs that soap and water cannot remove alone. Question 58. Describe the proper storage and handling of utensils to prevent contamination. A. Storing utensils on the floor for easy access. B. Keeping utensils in a clean, dry location and handling them by their handles. C. Washing utensils only when visibly dirty. D allowing utensils to air dry in shared hand towels. Answer. B. Keeping utensils in a clean, dry location and handling them by their handles. Proper storage and handling minimize the risk of contamination. Question 59. What procedures should be followed to ensure safe food preparation during a power outage? A. Continue using all electrical equipment until the power returns. B. Discard any TCS foods that have been in the temperature danger zone for more than two hours. C. Use candles or open flames in the kitchen for light and heat. D. Close immediately and discard all food, regardless of temperature. Answer. B. Discard any TCS foods that have been in the temperature danger zone for more than two hours. This precaution helps prevent the risk of foodborne illness from temperature abuse, Question 60. How should a food service operation manage customer complaints about food safety? A. Ignore complaints unless they become frequent. B. Listen carefully, document the complaint, investigate the issue, and take appropriate action. C. Offer a refund and assume the problem is solved. D. Blame the customer for misunderstanding food safety. Answer. B. Listen carefully, document the complaint, investigate the issue, and take appropriate action. Addressing complaints properly can improve food safety practices and customer trust. Question 61. Describe the role of temperature logs in maintaining food safety. A. To record the mood of the kitchen staff daily. B. They are not necessary if digital thermometers are used. C to monitor and document the temperatures of refrigeration, freezing, and hot holding units to ensure they are within safe limits. D. To keep track of cooking times for recipes. Answer. C. 
to monitor and document the temperatures of refrigeration, freezing, and hot holding units to ensure they are within safe limits. This practice helps in identifying potential issues before they lead to food safety problems. Question 62. What are the guidelines for proper waste management in a food service operation? A. Dispose of waste only at the end of each month. B. Store waste in food preparation areas until it is convenient to dispose of. C. Regularly remove waste from food preparation and service areas to prevent pests and maintain hygiene. D. Recycling is discouraged as it complicates waste management. Answer. C. Regularly remove waste from food preparation and service areas to prevent pests and maintain hygiene. Effective waste management is crucial for maintaining a clean and safe food service environment. Question 63. How can a food service operation reduce the risk of cross-contamination during food preparation? A. By preparing all food on a single cutting board for efficiency. B. Using separate cutting boards and utensils for raw and ready-to-eat foods. C. Ignoring minor spills and splashes between raw and cooked foods. D. Cooking foods at lower temperatures to preserve nutrients. Answer. B. Using separate cutting boards and utensils for raw and ready-to-eat foods. This practice prevents harmful pathogens in raw foods from contaminating ready-to-eat foods. Question 64. What are the guidelines for mobile food service operations to ensure food safety? A. Mobile units are exempt from food safety regulations. B. Follow the same food safety guidelines as stationary restaurants, including temperature control and proper sanitation. C. Use only non-perishable foods to simplify operations. D. Food safety is less critical due to the smaller scale of operation. Answer. B. Follow the same food safety guidelines as stationary restaurants, including temperature control and proper sanitation. Mobile food service operations must adhere to the same standards to ensure the safety of their food. Question 65. Describe the procedures for receiving and inspecting meat and poultry deliveries. A. Accept deliveries without inspection to save time. B. Check the temperature, packaging integrity, and expiration dates upon receipt. C. Only inspect deliveries randomly to ensure suppliers remain honest. D. Refuse all deliveries to avoid potential food safety issues. Answer. B. Check the temperature, packaging integrity, and expiration dates upon receipt. Proper inspection ensures that meat and poultry are safe and of high quality upon arrival. Question 66. How should a food service operation manage and track food temperatures throughout the day? A. By estimating temperatures based on cooking times. B. Using temperature logs for refrigerators, freezers, and hot holding units, and checking food temperatures regularly. C. Temperature tracking is only necessary for foods in hot holding. D. Assigning this task to the newest team member as a form of training. Answer B. Using temperature logs for refrigerators, freezers, and hot holding units, and checking food temperatures regularly. This ensures all foods are stored or held at safe temperatures. Question 67. What is the significance of maintaining clean and organized storage areas? A. Organization has no impact on food safety, only on aesthetics. B. It prevents cross-contamination, facilitates stock rotation, and deters pests. C. Clean storage areas are only necessary for open kitchens visible to customers. D. As long as food is cooked properly, storage conditions are irrelevant. Answer. B. It prevents cross-contamination, facilitates stock rotation, and deters pests. Keeping storage areas clean and organized is crucial for overall food safety. Question 68. How can the physical layout of a kitchen impact food safety? A. Only by affecting the workflow efficiency, not safety. B. Proper layout can reduce cross-contamination risks and improve sanitation by separating raw and ready-to-eat food preparation areas. C. 
Kitchen layout is purely a matter of personal preference. D. A compact layout is best to keep all ingredients within easy reach. Answer. B. Proper layout can reduce cross-contamination risks and improve sanitation by separating raw and ready-to-eat food preparation areas. Designing kitchens with food safety in mind is essential. Question 69. Describe the food safety considerations for buffet-style service. A. Buffets require no special food safety measures due to the variety of foods offered. B. Using sneeze guards, keeping foods at correct temperatures, and providing serving utensils for each dish. C. Allowing guests to use their hands to encourage a homely atmosphere. D. Serving all foods at room temperature to simplify service. Answer. B. Using sneeze guards, keeping foods at correct temperatures, and providing serving utensils for each dish. These practices help maintain food safety in buffet settings. Question 70. What are the guidelines for the proper labeling and storage of food to prevent misuse and contamination? A. Labeling is only necessary for allergenic foods. B. Use clear labels with product names, preparation dates, and use by dates. Store food to prevent cross contamination. C. Storing food in any available space regardless of temperature or labeling. D. Rewriting labels to extend use by dates for inventory management. Answer. B. Use clear labels with product names, preparation dates, and use by dates. Store food to prevent cross contamination. Proper labeling and storage are key to food safety and inventory management. Question 71. How should a food service operation handle expired or spoiled food products? A. Use them in staff meals to reduce waste. B. Discard them immediately to prevent the risk of foodborne illness. C. Ignore expiration dates as they are just guidelines. D. Donate them to food banks to support the community. Answer. B. Discard them immediately to prevent the risk of foodborne illness. Handling expired or spoiled foods properly is essential for maintaining food safety. Question 72. Describe the procedures for cleaning and sanitizing cutting boards. A. Rinse with water after each use. B. Wash with soap and water, rinse, sanitize, and allow to air dry. C. Soak in bleach overnight once a week. D. Replace cutting boards annually instead of regular cleaning. Answer. B. Wash with soap and water, rinse, sanitize, and allow to air dry. This ensures cutting boards are free from food residues and pathogens. Question 73. How can food service operations ensure the safe use of chemical sanitizers? A. By using the highest concentration possible for effectiveness. B. Following manufacturer's instructions for dilution and contact time to ensure effectiveness without contaminating food. C. Using sanitizers as a substitute for cleaning. D. Applying sanitizers only at the end of the day. Answer. B. Following manufacturer's instructions for dilution and contact time to ensure effectiveness without contaminating food. Proper use of sanitizers is crucial for food safety. Question 74. What are the considerations for safely incorporating farm-to-table elements into a menu? A. Assuming all farm-to-table ingredients are automatically safe and require no verification. B. Verifying the safety and quality of all ingredients, regardless of their source. C. Using only organic products to ensure food safety. D. Farm-to-table ingredients should be used without washing to maintain their natural flavors. Answer. B. Verifying the safety and quality of all ingredients, regardless of their source. Even farm-to-table ingredients must meet food safety standards to ensure they are safe for consumption. Question 75. Describe the impact of food recalls on a food service operation and the steps to take in response. A. Ignoring recalls to avoid alarming customers. B. Immediately removing recalled products from use, informing customers if necessary 
and following the manufacturer's or regulatory guidance for disposal or return. C. Using recalled products quickly before customers notice. D. Waiting for direct notification before taking action on recalls seen in the news. Answer. B. Immediately removing recalled products from use, informing customers if necessary, and following the manufacturer's or regulatory guidance for disposal or return. Prompt response to recalls is essential for customer safety. Question 76. How should a food service operation address the nutritional needs of customers while ensuring food safety? A. Focus solely on taste without regard for nutrition or safety. B. Balance menu options to meet various nutritional needs, ensuring all foods are prepared and stored safely. C. Offer only raw foods to maximize nutritional content. D. Nutritional needs are secondary to food safety concerns. Answer. B. Balance menu options to meet various nutritional needs, ensuring all foods are prepared and stored safely. Providing safe, nutritious food is important for customer satisfaction and health. Question 77. Describe the role of ongoing training and education in maintaining food safety standards. A. Unnecessary after initial employee orientation. B. Critical for keeping staff updated on the latest food safety practices, regulations, and technologies. C. Only required for new employees or when there is a problem. D. Focuses exclusively on cooking techniques, not safety. Answer. B. Critical for keeping staff updated on the latest food safety practices, regulations, and technologies. Continuous education is key to ensuring all staff members are competent in maintaining food safety. Question 78. How can technology be used to enhance food safety practices in a food service operation? A. By replacing all manual tasks with automated processes. B. Utilizing digital temperature monitoring, inventory management systems, and training platforms to improve efficiency and accuracy. C. Technology has no place in traditional cooking methods. D. Using social media to educate customers about food safety. Answer. B. Utilizing digital temperature monitoring, inventory management systems, and training platforms to improve efficiency and accuracy. Technology can significantly support the implementation and management of food safety practices. Question 79. What are the challenges and solutions for ensuring food safety in catering operations? A. The main challenge is the volume of food solved by cooking in smaller batches. B. Maintaining food at safe temperatures during transport and service, using insulated containers and portable heating slash cooling equipment. C. Catering does not face any unique food safety challenges. D. Using disposable dishes and utensils exclusively. Answer. B. Maintaining food at safe temperatures during transport and service, using insulated containers and portable heating slash cooling equipment. This is crucial for preventing foodborne illness in off-site catering. Question 80. Describe the procedures for safely transporting food to off-site locations. A. Transporting all food at room temperature for convenience. B. Using appropriate containers to maintain food at safe temperatures and prevent spills or contamination. C. Packing food the night before to save time on the day of the event. D. Relying on the customer to provide transportation for food. Answer. B. Using appropriate containers to maintain food at safe temperatures and prevent spills or contamination. Proper transportation is essential to ensure food safety and quality upon arrival. Question 81. How should a food service operation respond to emergencies that impact food safety, such as natural disasters? A. By continuing operations as usual to maintain revenue. B. Halting operations, assessing for food safety impacts, and discarding any compromised food items. C. Waiting for customers to report any food quality issues. D. Relying on emergency services to dictate specific actions regarding food safety. Answer. B. 
halting operations, assessing for food safety impacts, and discarding any compromised food items. It's crucial to ensure the safety of all food items before resuming operations. Question 82. What are the legal requirements for food safety training and certification for food handlers? A. Optional in most jurisdictions, based on the establishment's preference. B. Mandatory only for managers and chefs. C. Required for all food handlers within a certain time frame of employment, varying by jurisdiction. D. A one-time training at the start of a food handler's career. Answer. C. Required for all food handlers within a certain time frame of employment, varying by jurisdiction. Ensuring all food handlers are properly trained is crucial for maintaining public health standards. Question 83. How can a food service operation ensure compliance with changing food safety regulations? A. By conducting annual reviews of food safety practices. B. Ignoring minor regulatory changes to focus on major ones. C. Staying informed through regular training, updates from health departments, and industry resources. D. Compliance is the responsibility of the individual food handler, not the operation. Answer. C. Staying informed through regular training, updates from health departments, and industry resources. Keeping up with regulatory changes is essential for ongoing compliance. Question 84. Describe the importance of food safety culture in a food service operation. A. It is less important than customer service culture. B. Food safety culture emphasizes the value of safety practices at all levels of the organization, leading to better compliance and reduced risk of foodborne illness. C. It only applies to high-end dining establishments. D. A strong food safety culture is beneficial for marketing purposes only. Answer. B. Food safety culture emphasizes the value of safety practices at all levels of the organization, leading to better compliance and reduced risk of foodborne illness. Cultivating a strong culture is fundamental to effective food safety management. Question 85. What are the best practices for managing leftovers to ensure food safety? A. Reheating leftovers only once before discarding. B. Cooling leftovers rapidly to below 41 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius, and reheating to 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degrees Celsius, before serving. C. Leaving leftovers at room temperature for no more than 4 hours before refrigeration. D. Mixing leftovers with fresh food to extend their shelf life. Answer. B. Cooling leftovers rapidly to below 41 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degree Celsius, and reheating to 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius, before serving. Proper handling of leftovers is crucial to prevent the growth of pathogens and ensure food safety.